KC's Audio Vault. Gordy Johnson from Grady. April 14th, 2010. Gordy Johnson, hello. Hey. Thank you for coming in. Man, I made it back. You made it back? It was yes, just in October the last time you rolled through. Yeah, that's right. Have you been hitting the road hard ever since then? Seems to me, yeah. I've been, uh, well, there's been some touring. There's been a bunch of album production. Worked on a bunch of records since the last time uh, we talked, yeah. So you're, uh, you as producer? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I took the Trues in the studio uh, a couple months ago, so they're going to have a new single out pretty soon. Uh, Mixed a record for the Spades. Uh, Mixed Joel Plaskett record. I got a new Government Mule record out there right now. Cool. Um, yeah, man, I've been pretty busy. Is Plaskett doing another triple album, or is this one a little scaled back? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing next. He was out on tour with Thrush Hermit there for a minute, so that was I cool. Think he's getting the rock and roll out of his system. That's enough mandolin playing for just a minute there, Joel. Just <laughs> get out and some guitar for us. So it was cool. Well, you, you fall, probably feel plagued by this question, but since we're talking about reunions, let's get this one out of the way because whoops, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. What do you isn't want? there a show booked for Big Sugar? There's a couple of shows booked for Big Sugar. You know, um, I wasn't, like, fixing to launch some big reunion or anything. I might still do that, I guess. Um, I really was just, you know, we had some offers the last several years. And I've been really busy. I mean, God knows, I've been really busy with the new band. But, for like, for a New Year's gig, we played Edmonton one year. We played Saskatoon another year. Not with the the whole band, but I took uh, Mr. Chill, the harmonica guy from Big Sugar, and myself, and we went and did a couple New Year's gigs with the Trues as our band. Because who knows Big Sugar songs better than the Trues? Nobody. Like they they opened for us about eight hundred times, so they knew the songs inside and out. So I really got to credit those guys because. If it wasn't for the trues, I wasn't really thinking about Big Sugar songs. I wasn't thinking about doing them. wasn't really wanting to do them. And then I did those gigs with the trues, and I was like, man, that's a lot of fun. That really is. That's some good old songs, you know? Um, so the guys really kind of rekindled my interest in it and my love of the songs. Uh, so this year, we got a call the, I guess, World Snowboarding Something Something is in Whistler, B.C. at the end of the month. And they, they wanted Big Sugar to play. I thought, well, I mean, I guess so, sure. So I got a hold of Gary and Kelly and just got all the guys back together. And we rehearsed for a while in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. And was that and easy? Great. Just a, a few phone calls? Well, I had to, there was a bit of searching for... <laughs> it's <laughs> like the Blues some Brothers. Of the, some of the band members, <laughs> yes, it was like the Blues Brothers. I had to get like, you know, a search party out looking for Gary Lowe, which we found him eventually. Um, yeah, and the rehearsals went great, man. It was just, without even thinking about it, the band was just like right kind of where we left it. So we'll probably do a couple of shows this year, I guess. That'll be nice. Well, yeah. Gr- Grady in town tonight at the Pyramid. Yeah. It'll be good to see you guys uh, there there again. Uh, what's new with Grady? Has it just been touring? Like, I guess you said you were doing a little bit of production on the side. A bunch of touring. We just shot a, uh, we shot a new, uh, new video for... Uh, for a single, the single is called "If I Was King," which has been getting a really nice response out here on the tour. Um, shot a video for it. You know, we found ourselves kind of in a bit of a catch twenty two. You know, because we're not based here. I, mean, I guess we're eligible for all the Canadian grant money, but I kind of don't feel right taking it at times because we don't live here anymore, and we live down south. And there's Canadian bands that are here. You know struggling to get it done so we never get any of these grants and so as a result we haven't really been able to shoot a video i just finally one day thought to myself you know okay you guys tomorrow tomorrow we're shooting a video be at my house at six o'clock the light's good from six thirty to about seven thirty, <laughs> and i took my uh i was like i got this little camera for christmas just one of these it's about the size of my cell phone it's smaller than an iphone one of those, uh, what are they called, Flip Minis Cyber or something? Shot or okay, something. Okay, yeah, there's a few I different. Know. Here I am plugging the, yeah, maybe I'll get an endorsement. <laughs> um, this Sony camera, man, I shot a bunch of home movies over Christmas with it and shoot it in black and white. And it looks really cool. I was like, wow, black and white. This looks really cool. There's my kids running around. It actually looks really, really good. I'm like, hell, I'll just get a tripod. And so I shot, I shot it myself. I didn't tell anybody. I was like, I've got a tripod. I got my eight year old like working the camera. Okay, buddy, but push the button on the stereo. I got my Jeep, drove it out onto my property and we just played along with the stereo. Uh, anyway, pretty humble 
uh, you know, production value. Uh, and the video looks awesome. I, c- I couldn't believe it. I was like walking around with this little camera showing it to people going, dude, check it out. I don't know how I'm going to edit it, but check it out. That's pretty badass, right? Look at that. I was showing it to some fellas in Toronto, and one of these guys runs a production company or frame blender in Toronto, saw it and was like, how, how do you have video? How do you have your footage on your phone? This was not my phone. It's my camera. Well, how do you have it on your camera? Well, I shot it on this camera. How did you shoot it? You're in it. Well, that's called a tripod, man. That's a <laughs> <laughs> so you are you going to edit it yourself as no, well? No, these guys helped me edit it. Frame Blender in Toronto just like, come to the office tomorrow. We're going to edit your video for you. I'm like, really? Sweet. So just fans, you know, and they, make, they do awesome stuff. I've seen stuff they've done with... Uh, Chris Cornell and the Trues and the Spades and just a lot of my favorite bands, you know, like, wow. So got to work with those guys. They edited it up for us. And it's, it's like, I don't know. I think it's one of the best looking videos. And you probably I've spent a done. case of beer on it and a, and a phone. That's about it. Right? To our manager was like, you can't, Grady, you can't be saying how, how much you shot your video for. Uh, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. Well, it's not embarrassing. It's kind of actually kind of cool. I feel like I got away with something here. Well, we'll we're, we're going to play the uh, that single, If I Was King. But you you got your banjo out. You want to do a tune for us right now? Yeah, I'll sing a song for you. All right, it's Gordy Johnson in the studio doing a Grady show tonight at the Pyramid. Which one you would like to do? I'm going to sing a song that's also on the new record, Good Is Dead, and this is called What You Did. I'm telling 
me right now. Gordy Johnson, live on the Power Drive, Winnipeg's Best Rock, Power 97. Grady playing the Pyramid this evening. Uh, your drummer, fantastic. Ain't she? I'm just wondering, everything going smoothly? You kind of have a, uh, over the years, almost a spinal tap sort oh, of record. Oh, now with the drummer thing. Yeah, but you know what? I got, I got a good one. Yeah, okay. Listen, we got to keep up with her. It's not the other way around. Yeah. No, she's an ass whooper back there. I'll tell you what, she... Man, that little girl come into... If anybody's ever seen us or seen a picture of us, our drummer is like... I can bench pr press my drummer. This is the first band I've been in where I can actually bench press my drummer. I don't recommend bench pressing a dude anyway. <laughs> but this little girl come in and she just... First of all, she killed the audition. That was it. The audition process was over as soon as she sat behind the drums and played. Uh, regardless of he, she, whatever. you know, um, And just, you know, she's really worked into the personality of the band. She sings a bunch on the record, too, like we do a bunch of singing together. So, really, her, her vibes in, the, in our music are, are pretty strong. So, yeah, it's been pretty good. And no, she's not going to blow up. I'm pretty sure she's sturdy. She's had a good, she's a good, good checkup, you know, good smoking, you know, it's just, she's good. She's uh, last cool. time you were through in October, talking a little bit about uh, ZZ Top mm -hmm. and how you got, uh, well, you, you sort of know the guys and all yeah. that. And I, I was sent this quote from uh, uh, Bill Ham. What's his connection to ZZ Top? He was a former manager? Yeah, he's the original manager of ZZ Top. I mean, he managed them for like 30 years. And now he, he's hooked he up in the Grady camp? Well, he retired a little while ago, and he's been, uh, he's, you know, I mean, he kind of thinks of himself as like our benevolent uncle. He's, because he, he's based in Austin, we're a Texas band, and he's sort of taken us under his wing. He's like, well, no, you fellas, whatever you need, you come and see Uncle Bill, basically. So he's been, uh, he's been very, very kind to us, let's just say. Is this, we were sort of talking off air about uh, If I Was King. Was this the gentleman that heard it? If I Was King, you know, really funny. This is a funny story. I don't think he'd mind me telling it. Um, of course, Bill is, I mean, he's quite a mover and shaker and has been in the music industry for a long time. He produced all the early ZZ Top records. And, it, you know, he's quite an unbelievable character. Uh, he's in his, he's probably well into his 70s. And, uh He'd taken quite an interest in the band. He'd come out and seen us about a dozen times, and he just kept bugging his staff. we got to do something with old Grady there, you know. So his staff made him a, a, a CD of just different songs, you know, a Grady mix or something for him to listen to in his car on his long drives across Texas or whatever. He's driving his Cadillac, listening to the radio, and he hears a song come on the radio, and he's like, i gotta, I got to talk to Grady. And he sat me down in his office, and he said, now, I heard a song in my car the other day. Now, son, if you, you do what you want with this advice. Now, I don't want to tell you what you should be doing, but I'm, I'm just going to lay it out there for you. Now, I heard a song, and I thought, now, that's a song. If Grady had a song like that, now, we could really do something. Now, I don't mean to tell you what to do with your music. And we're like, no, the, the Bill, that's our, that's our song, actually. <laughs> that it, that it, the reason it sounds so perfect for Grady is that it is. Grady, actually. So <laughs> that's great. He what? was a little embarrassed, but tickled. I mean, that's such a nice compliment. He heard it and thought, "If only you guys had a song like that, it would be killer." You know. So and it it stands out on the record. the 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 first time you came by, well, just last year, yeah. you you came in. I'm like, man, I love if I was king, and that kind of yeah. you you said you had heard that from a few people, and sort of surprised yeah. that that sort of came up to the front. It's surprising because it's the only song on the record with accordion on it. So <laughs> let me the only. Uh, I have at various times, I have had the distinction of having songs on the radio over the past couple of decades. Of like, There was a Big Sugar song that had harmonica in it, and a couple of them, in fact. Mm -hmm. And, you know, radio stations were like, we can't play a song with harmonica in it. Oh, digging a hole. They kind of did play it a few times. <laughs> um, and then we had a reggae song or two. They're like, oh, we can't play a reggae song on a radio on the radio, but they did play a bunch of Big Sugar reggae songs. They did, we do still. I mean, what did you expect from me? Of course there's accordion on this record. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm running out of instruments to annoy people with. So let's try this one, you know. We're but. talking to uh, Gordy Johnson from, uh, well, Ex of Big Sugar. We'll see what happens this year. And definitely yeah. of Grady. Yeah. Tonight, 
Pyramid. We're going to finish off our chat with uh, the one we were just talking about, If I Was King. Thank you so much for coming in. Hey, my pleasure. Hey, y'all get down there early, too, because we got a band on tour with us called Flash Lightning, and they're lighting it up, man. They, we're, we're, we get there early every night to watch our set. We're really loving our Flash Lightning, so you got to check out those dudes, too. Very nice. This is Grady, If I Was King on the Power Drive, Power 97. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.